Hi, my name is Gabriel Weymouth, and I'm going to talk about the waterlily.jl package. It's for doing fluid simulations in pure Julia. The concept behind waterlily is to make a very simple but very general flow solver. As you can see, we're simulating the flow past the Julia logo here, or here's the flow past a flapping plate. Uh, we can also do three-dimensional simulations. Uh, so this is a Mackie visualization or a slice through. This is a Taylor Green vortex, which has kind of got no body, but we swirl the flow and then we watch it evolve. And then someone on Twitter asked me if I could do a donut. <laughs> so we did uh, the flow past a donut and you can see kind of the different sort of rings of vorticity that come off of that. Running a simulation in Water Lily is pretty straightforward. Um, first, you need to get the package, which is now registered. Then we need to define the size of the simulation. That's basically just going to set the size of the arrays for the different fluid variables. Um, and here we're also defining something that defines a center of a geometry and the radius. So this is going to be a circle flow. Then we define the geometry itself, which is going to be called body. And the key part to that is assigned distance function, which I'll discuss a little bit more. But basically, given some point x, we subtract off where the center of the circle should be. We take the distance to the center, and then we subtract the radius. And that gives us the assigned distance function to the edge of the circle. That lets us define the simulation then. We pass in the array size. This is the flow direction. So I want a unit flow in the x direction and nothing in the y. I give the size of the body to help set up some timing, and then the body itself gets passed in. So I've run those first five lines, and you can see it's initialized this simulation object. Um, but we need to integrate it forward in time in order to actually see the simulation. So the function for that is sim step, and if I run that, then you can see quite fast. Uh, it's run through 10 convective cycles. However, it'll be a little bit easier to show you what happened if I use this simgif function. So in this case, it integrates, but it also generates images and puts them together into a GIF. So it'll take a little bit longer, but it'll be prettier. So the simulation GIF function integrated from a time of 10 and did 20 more. So now it's at time 30 and it's made us a GIF. And we can see that that's a nice oscillating flow. The default visualization here is uh, the vorticity, so it's like the rotation. So that's how Water Lily works. It's pretty fast and simple, but why write another flow solver in Julia? It was mostly because of some research that my group is working on. We're trying to look at integrating machine learning into computational simulations of fluid flow. We have this paper in the Journal of Computational Physics where we're deep learning uh, turbulence models. And things like this are very difficult to do standard. The flow solvers in Fortran and the deep learning is in Python and those two don't go together as nicely as two things that were both in Julia. So that was really the main motivation. There's also so many active communities working on you know, automatic differentiation and GPU computing and everything else. So it seemed timely. So I wanted to go very briefly into a couple of the neat Julia specific parts of the flow solver. Uh, so first the flow struct inside the simulation struct that holds the momentum equations. Those are the Navier-Stokes equations. And that's how the flow is integrated in time. The kind of fun Julia part is that the pressure and velocity and all the rest of those, they're just simple multidimensional arrays. And by using Cartesian index and Cartesian indices, the range part, we can write totally multidimensional code. So it can run 2D simulations or 3D simulations with exactly the same code. You just have to start with different dimension arrays. Um, so as an example of that, this little delta function, it basically is a step function. So it says started from some Cartesian index, please move one direction over in X or Y or Z or whatever. Um, and we can use that to define things like a very simple finite difference formula. So this is the velocity u at some Cartesian index capital I, and the component of the velocity vector is given by lowercase i. And then for the finite difference, we just take the value one step over in j, we subtract the value at the original place, and that's your velocity derivative. 
then we could use that velocity derivative function to do anything we want. We could solve the Navier-Stokes equations. A simpler thing here is the lambda two rotation metrics. So this is basically how rotating is the flow at some point. And that's actually what I was visualizing in those videos before of like the Taylor Green vortex and the donut flow. So that's the velocity and momentum, but what about pressure? To get pressure in a flow solver, you have to solve a big matrix equation. And while Julia has a bunch of linear algebra systems that could solve this, for performance reasons, we wrote our own geometric multigrid solver, which is really fast, maybe faster than n log n for this particular type of problem. The way multigrid works is that you start from a fine grid and you restrict down to coarser and coarser grids until the system is so small that it can be solved trivially. And then you interpolate or prolongate the solution back up to the fine grid. And what's neat is that all you really need to define is a function that maps a kind of a set, a range of indices on one grid down to one exact point on the next grid down. And then that same function will work again and all the way back up in reverse. And that's a one liner in Julia. So this near function takes a Cartesian index and it returns the range, the Cartesian indices at the next grid up. And that works again, no matter how many dimensions the grid has, 2D or 3D, you would even work in 1D and 4D. I just don't know what those flows would look like. Um, and then the restrict and prolongate functions, you either just sum all over the points in that range, or you copy to all the points in that range. And then finally, we need to get the geometry in there. And so Waterlily does that with a sine distance function, implicitly defining the surface of the geometry. So I recommend this website to look at a bunch of fun computer graphics applications of sine distance functions. But basically, you're going to be able to immerse any geometry you want as long as you can define a function that says how far away you are from the surface. And then we can also make that body move or change shape or rotate or whatever by mapping the space. And then the part that's very cool in Julia is then we can use automatic differentiation. So by taking the time derivative of the map, we get the velocity of the body automatically. By taking the Hessian of the SDF, we can get the normal and we can get the curvature. And we never have to define special functions to do those things. And given any SDF, we can immediately get the normals and curvatures and the velocities uh, right away. So that's it. That's Water Lily. Um, we're having a really fun time doing this, but there's still plenty more to be done. So for instance, a surface mesh, that's going to be a pretty easy adjustment. So if you want to pull in an STL, that would be a fun little project. We really want to get it on GPUs to help speed up three-dimensional simulations, especially. And I think there's a bunch of fun additional applications. Uh, it's really easy to use this to try new things out, just a couple hours, and you can usually get a fun, cool simulation. So give it a try.